I've got some mail. Let me show you what I've got this time. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Right, let's see what's in the first one. Apparently it's just three boxes. Okay. So, yes, it is three boxes, I suppose. Three collections of boxes. So these are SMD component storage cases. I had some other ones. I think I had some this size before somewhere. I, I actually can't find them now. But I didn't have very many of them. I think I only had, I don't know, half a dozen or so. So the idea of these is that you can actually clip them together uh, one way or another. Which way do these go? Go around. So these sort of lock together, little locking pins, and you can just uh, build up an array as much as you want. Like so. Right, so you get these different sizes. I've got those little smaller ones, which I've shown previously as well. So I was looking at something to store some larger parts in. And I thought, well, if I get a bunch of these, then um, get those out of the way right now. And I've got options because they can also build these in with the other sizes, the other sizes we put with them. So you basically have a little lever here, you pop that up and you can get your parts out now. These aren't a perfect seal around the edges, so this is something you have to bear in mind if you ever think about getting some of these. There is a small gap there, see this one here has got a bit of a gap. So if you've got really small parts, you might find they fall out. So that's something to bear in mind, so which types you get. Um, these ones are pretty good, but if you get ones which are quite badly warped, this one's got a bit of warp on it. See, there's a bit of a gap there. Well, I've seen these pictures of these things, and these lids are really warped. And so instead of being dead flat, you know, in this orientation, they, like, you know, banana shaped, and you know, they come up at each end. And well, that's no bloody good, is it? So if they walk the other way, it'd probably be alright because you push it down, it'll bend it straight, and it'll latch it. But um, yeah, so watch out for ones you buy. You can get different qualities, so look around, look at feedback, especially look at feedback. I mean, these are on. I think these are AliExpress. I can't remember now. They could have been Banggood. So anyway, check out the links below for these if you're interested in these things or any of the other sizes. They do lots of different ones and they're all locked together. So what brand are these called? Tie or something? One tie? You can see the branding on here. Yeah, wind tie. Right, so that's what they're called. So yeah, handy things to have. I just need to start putting stuff in them. I've got lots of these component storage things now. I just need to start using them. Oh, let's see what's in this one. I'm still waiting for this parts for the circuit board here. This is for that Philips uh, pulse generator I'm repairing. I'm still waiting for the parts to turn up. They got shipped two weeks ago and they haven't arrived yet, it's a bit strange. Anyway, multi-field EMF meter. Ah, okay. This is from Banggood. Right, this is an item for review. Yep, so this is a Banggood item. So this is for review, so I haven't paid for this at all. The theory is behind this is that it's you can use it to check electromagnetic fields. So I'm just going to have a quick look at it right now, just to show you what I've got. Oh, I'm putting the straps of the bag, not the actual drawers. Here we go. And I'll do a proper view on this, so watch out for that as well. They supplied batteries, which is nice. Oh, dual pack. Let's at least power it up and have a little look. Even if I don't know how to use it yet. Electric field sensor, RF sensor, electric field sensor. Hmm. What does it all mean? I don't know yet. It looks pretty cool though, doesn't it? So make sure you check out the review video for this thing when I uh, when I get a look at this. I've got no idea what I'm doing. Anyway, it looks like a cool gadget. So watch out for the review. 
Right, see what's in here. I've got a pretty good idea what it is actually. Hmm. Not wonderful packaging. Lots of air inside the box, but it's kind of wedged, so maybe it's all right. I prefer lots of wrapping around things so things don't fly around inside the box. Anyway, obviously it's a MacBook. So I don't know what the story is with this one. Um, that's one I've purchased to fix. It's a 15 inch 2012 in Brightly. Get it out of the bag, come on. Very scungy DC inboard. Missing feet, but that's not unusual. What was wrong with it? I actually don't remember. All right, let's plug back safe in servants. There's a green light. There's an orange light. Beeping. That's right. Remember, it beeps. So. Apparently got dropped, as you can see from here. So it's dinged that right in. So let's open it up and have a look, just very quickly, see what's here. So I had to do a bit of digging around, find out what screws it is. It's a star, but 1.2 mil. Maybe it isn't a 2012, maybe it's a later one. B MagSafe 2, any with different screws, makes you wonder if it's actually a different model. Maybe it isn't a 2012, I can't remember. It might have been a later one. Hmm. Now, get the screws. There's one screw missing, I've noticed. Was it? They've got four screws. One, two, three. Yeah, one screw missing. Two screws missing. One here, one here. So I just want to very quickly have a little look and see if there's anything simple. But the fact there's a couple of screws missing means someone's already had a look in here anyway. I expect. But, uh, yeah. I'm surprised that just a, a basic drop like that would have broken it. But that beeping is like a sign of um, bad RAM. So maybe it's got bad RAM and it's what's wrong, or whether it's something else. All right, so the thing, the casing there is really too minor, I mean, it's easy to straighten out. Not worried about that part. I think to the side casing here, can probably straighten it out as well. This is not a 2012. Hmm. What is this thing? I don't actually know. Oh, it's going to be harder than I thought then. <laughs> it has soldered on RAM. That's going to be an interesting project. I need to figure out which version this is. Oh, I think this is 2012. Yeah, so if you're interested in MacBook stuff and you're not already subscribed, then make sure you do subscribe because I do do MacBook stuff occasionally from time to time. I do videos on it. I don't do a lot of it, but um, just things to tinker around with mostly. And this one I thought was going to be a good computer to work on. There's a liquid damage indicator here, there's no, and they're both white, which means they're not got wet. There's one on the circuit board there, which is still white. So if it has had liquid damage, it's not been much. There's one over here, which is still white. The drive's gone. I don't have any of these drives. So that's another problem. I don't have a drive to put into it, so I'll have to work that out too. But um, let's hope I can fix the buddy thing. We'll see. Okay, yes, it is a 2012, but it's a 2012 Retina. It's the Retina model. So that's why it looks a little bit different. I haven't worked on one of these before. Yeah, so the RAM is soldered on the motherboard here, you can see, soldered in. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM. I hope it's not a RAM problem, because if it is, I've got trouble. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I don't know, I might even have to like reflow it or something, I don't know, but it's concerning. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that. All right, let's see what's in this thing. I have all packaged it as I think I know what's in here. My knife is let me down. There we go. Let's see if it is thick enough. I'd say by the fact that I can actually feel the plastic on the foot here, like right there. There's a foot. There's no bubble wrap at all on that foot. It's just straight on. I really hope it's done better than that everywhere else. No, front, front bezel, same deal. 
not great packaging, even though I said put plenty on. Right, we'll see if it survived. No bubble wrap on that feet. Okay, front corner here. There's a hot edge. Look. Insufficient wrapping. Right, let's hope it managed it to survive. I think I'll have to change the real knife. Front panel seems okay. And the rear looks okay. This is an HP 8648B. I had one of these previously, I had a, was it 8647 wasn't it? 8647, which is the one gigahertz. This is the two gigahertz version. I sold the one gigahertz version recently. Someone actually approached me asking if I wanted to sell one. And I said, yeah, okay. Eventually after I debated it a little bit, I thought, oh yeah. I don't really need three second generators. <laughs> so, so I sold it. So I sold it. And I thought, well, with the money from that, I could. Was it rocking? Um, I could buy another one. Missing feet, that's why it's rocking. And dented. See that? So it's been dropped at some point. So it's been dropped at some point, and here's dented too, but mostly that corner. That may or may not matter. That foot also seems to be at a very slight angle. That one's dead vertical. This one's leaning over very slightly. Can you see that? It's not dead vertical. Yeah, it's had some kind of impact. It has a fault, apparently. What voltage is this on? I can't know if this is multi voltage or not. It has an adjutant seal which has been broken. Probably from someone trying to fix it. I don't know. But it's got a fault anyway. Now, the last time I powered one of these up from scratch, it went bang because the reefer cap in the back decided I didn't want to work anymore. Um, Got feet on it at least. Just to go on feet. Let's power it up. See what we get. Clunks. Display resolution's a bit low. Let's fix that. Here we go. So a synth out of lock. Div het main x. So this is what was described in the listing as being um, a fault on the unit. And I haven't looked into what causes this yet. I, I thought, right, well, it's a faulty unit. Let's give it a go. Now, I don't know if it actually does anything. It's got an interesting smell to it. I think it's had bad caps or something. It can definitely smell something. Yeah, maybe old blown capacitor. I'm not sure. Definitely a smell to it. Let's do 10 megahertz. Um, amplitude, 0 dBm. RF on. It was a relay clicking and something. I have to have a look and see if it's actually put anything out. Let me quickly do that. Pick up something. See if there's any output. Well, I've got this set of 0 dBm output at 10 megahertz and I'm currently getting. There's nothing there. So maybe it has no output at all. My speech man likes picking up no output. Okay, so it's dead. Okay. So I'm, I can relax a bit about the output being bad. That triangle there usually means it's got bad output if, if I'm getting that right. So there's no output whatsoever which is better than incorrect output. So let's do um, 1 gigahertz and again nothing near uh, 2 gigahertz and again nothing near. So yeah it's definitely not putting any output. So that's fine. I'd rather have no output than uh, a bad one. Okay well it is what it is. Something's definitely wrong. It's good there's nothing wrong because now I've got something to actually fix, which is why I purchased it. I buy things to fix them and to do videos on. So buying a broken piece of test kit like this is perfect because that's exactly what I want. Something to show you later on. So if you want to see me try and fix this thing and you're not already subscribed, then make sure you do subscribe. And also thank you to my Patreon supporters or people that donate to me through PayPal. Those donations help me to buy things like this and to do other video content, so. Let's open this up and have a look inside, see if anything's missing. Because that'd be bad if something's missing.
I was trying to cover up later on those dents, I'll fix those. I'm not worried about them right now. Well, it's got the top covers on it. Have a look at the bottom of the ball. Check for any damage down there. See all this. Flux. So someone's been doing something with it at some point. Oh, let's take the top cover off and have a quick look. Oh, actually it's quite a few screws to get the top cover off this thing. Reference signal gen synth RF output. The cards are there. <laughs> I can see the cards are there. Power supplies in here. So it could be a power supply problem, it could be something like that because there is a smell. So maybe there is a power supply issue which is causing a problem with the cards. Yeah, I think there's no way around it. Let's pull a bunch of screws out. Okay. Oh, and my battery's gone flat. Oh no. Let's use a manual screwdriver now. Well, that's probably not much slower actually. Okay, so look. What do I see? I mean, there's a lithium battery in there. I see some caps which look okay. Hmm. Okay, so there's not a lot to see in there. I've got lighting, but it's not great over here right now. See some. So the bottom board looks like. And so there's a bunch of caps in here, but they all look okay. There's nothing bulging that I can see. So there's nothing obvious to go for straight away. That looks a lot like the same power supply as the one which is in the 8647, which blew up on me before. <laughs> so, yeah. It's definitely smelling here. There we go. There's some tantalums in there. I can see that straight away. See them just in the edge there, next to the connector. It smells a bit dusty, but... I don't know, it's just, that smell seems to be everywhere. It's permeated right through the whole thing. Nothing obvious in there at least. It's a reference board. It's a good fit anyway, nice tight fit. Okay, pop this one out. I'm worried about snapping these bloody levers. Okay. It's got JM mods on it, interesting. That's a SIGGEN synthesizer. VCO BIOS, is that right um, looks very really similar, it's got tantalums in there as well, same deal. Still smells about the same. Visually there's nothing I can see. Funny. What was that? I just want to lay down again. What was that? Look at the last board, which is supposed to be the output board. Same deal, it's got extra tents in this one. Oh, it smells like worse in this one actually. No, I don't know, I can't tell. It's all sort of much of a muchness, it's all very similar. I think it's just like it smells right throughout the whole unit. It may not even be these balls, it might be the um, filter, the input filter. It smells a bit like the input filter, that kind of that kind of bad blown cat smell. I don't know. Cut the caps down the main board there, they look alright. There's a board in the back here. Seems to be assisting that parts there. It's going to be a good project. For see on the chassis here, it's bowed in, it's not bowed in anywhere else. So that's a sign of it being hit on that back corner. So that's what I suspected as well, is that it's, it's had some kind of impact. I can probably just push that back out again or straighten it back up. I think it's only really minor, you know, it's not really a big deal. But uh, it's one of these things you just want to tweak, just to make sure everything's aligned correctly. I mean, maybe if it's had an impact on that corner, maybe it's possibly cracked the circuit board. Maybe. Broken a trace. Dislodged a component, maybe. Who knows? But yeah, it's definitely had some kind of impact. 
Make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon, all that sort of stuff. You know, you know the drill. I shouldn't have to tell you everybody video, should I? Should I? Do I? Do I need to tell you every video? No, oh, maybe. Catch you later. Bye. I think I forgot to turn it off. Oh! <laughs> I jumped on it. No. Uh. Did you turn it back off? <laughs> I can't turn it off. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Let's plug some power into ovens. I'll have to clean that DC inboard because my was it might not work at all. Uh, oh, that's a MagSafe 2, is it? It is a MagSafe 2. Hmm. I need to rethink this. Oh. Cut up another bits and pieces. I shouldn't go with it.